Hi, everybody. Thanks for attending today. Welcome to this month's Agility Learning Lab. Uh, for this month, we're going to be going over Weiss's views. Now, I wanted to start this by saying that, you know, this is a little bit more of a technical session compared to some of our other learning labs, uh, but it's very important, right? Um, understanding these views is going to be very helpful to everyone on the call, no matter what your technical acumen is or how experienced you are with Weiss's. Um, I think the knowledge here today is going to, you know, serve everybody very well on just some different levels. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, to make my introduction, hi, I'm Chase Linson Bigler. I always leave my camera on for that. So if you guys haven't been here before, it's nice to meet you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off now so you can focus on the content being shared. What I do here is I'm the, I manage partner enablement for Weiss's. Um, so I work a lot with our partners to, you know, build their knowledge of the product and, and help teach them things about Weiss's and answer any questions they may have. Now, a big part of that is producing content. And we're working on producing a lot of content for all of our Weiss's users. So that includes partners, uh, customers, prospects, really anybody who uh, wants to know more about Weiss's or gets in there and touches the product. Uh, we're just working really hard to produce more content for anybody getting in there. And a big part of that are these learning labs. So for anyone interested, these learning labs are on the second Tuesday of every month, 2.30 to 3.30 EST. Uh, we only send out the invite about um, a week in advance. So I know everybody here is busy, calendars get filled up. If you wanna make sure you're available for these, um, that's the time they will be every month, 2.30 to 3.30 on the second Tuesday. Um, so you have the opportunity there to, to block it off if that's something you wanna make sure you're available for. Now, a big goal of ours is to grow our partner program for 2023. Um, so for all of my partners on the call today, I'm a dedicated resource to you guys for things like introduction training on the product, um, more in-depth training for things like design tools and tailoring, uh, as well as standing team meetings to talk about customers, um, you know, just continue working on Weiss's enablement help you think through tailorings for customers or specific processes in Weiss's. So any partners that are on the call, I encourage you to reach out and sell, set something up if you don't have anything like that on the calendar currently. Um, you know, it's something that I want to try and get set up with all of you guys to make sure we have an open line of communication and I can be, you know, helping you guys get as strong with the, with the product as possible. But without further ado, let's get into why we're here today. So we're going to be going over views. What we're gonna cover is why we use views uh, just at a high level so you understand why we're talking about those today in comparison to tables. Um, how knowing these views can help all of you on the call. And then we're gonna highlight some key uh, types of views that we use in Weiss's. So we're gonna talk about our packing and shipping views, which is probably the most important piece of today. Um, you know, that's, that's a piece of the product that is native and specific to Weiss's. Um, so anytime you're using packing and shipping, we'll talk about this more, of course, but you're looking at actual Weiss's views instead of SAP tables. That's the only time when, when that really comes into play because that's an extension of the SAP system that you don't really get natively with SAP. Uh, we have some views out there that help significantly with labeling. When it comes to troubleshooting, we have views for tracking transactions and auditing uh, transactions or packages, things like that. We have preload views that allow us to preload data and post a bulk transaction in SAP. And then lastly, we have some views that work more in the background and contain a lot of information for you know, how your WISIS system runs and the setup of your WISIS system. So why views? Uh, we use one-to-one -one views, right? They're, they're an exact copy of our tables in a lot of situations to standardize the language um, across those tables. Um, for all the ERPs that we support. So we start out with an ERP called Macola. I know everybody here today is probably on the SAP side of things. Um, you know, the goal of using these views is we can have our software point to, you know, one standard point of truth, so to speak. Um, the language in our code can, can match up across all ERP platforms, even though um, the table naming conventions from SAP or Macola are different. So that's why we talk about views. When you dig into our forms or our grids, they're going to be looking at the views, not the specific tables from SAP. And why should you guys know views? 
So first off, views are going to be very important for everybody here as far as troubleshooting data related issues. So, you know, anytime you have a data related issue that is um, as a result of WISIS or relates to inventory, um, you want to know these views so you can get in there, dig around the data, see what's wrong, um, or, you know, just understand what our team's talking about. If you're working with our support team, this will help you have a better understanding of the things they're checking and what they're looking into. In addition to that, on the data side still, of course, knowing these views is very important for data reporting. So being aware of, you know, what the data looks like in WISIS and what data you care about inside of WISIS can help you um, either create grids in WISIS that give you good data or, you know, create dashboards or export data to Excel. However you want to play with your data or report your data, you need to know the WISIS views that house that data in order to get the uh, information that you're looking for. Also more on the um, tailoring side, you can tailor WISIS applications or create labels very easily once you understand our views. Um, you know, a lot of things that you're doing for labels specifically um, are going to touch inventory specific uh, pieces of information. And a lot of the time when it's inventory specific, you're probably going to need to query some WISIS specific tables rather than just SAP tables. Same thing with tailored applications too. Again, a lot of tailoring, uh, we notice, you know, there are tailored applications that only touch SAP tables, but a lot of tailored applications have to touch a WISIS view at some point in time. So we're gonna start here on the packing and shipping. Like I mentioned before, I think this is probably the most important part of today, and this is the one we'll go into the most extensively. So when we talk about the packing and shipping views, it's important to note that these are kind of on the same level as like an SAP table. So if you're looking at something like ORDR or OITM for your items or your orders in SAP, um, similar to that, that's how our packing and shipping tables function. So our packing tables handle all of the packing data, right? That's not native to SAP. So you have to go to a WISIS view to query that data and use that data. Same thing with a WISIS shipment, right? That's not named SAP. SAP goes sales order to sales order delivery. Shipment's a step in the middle. So if you wanna get details on the shipment, you wanna get information on the shipment, you have to go to the WISIS shipment table. So getting into that, we'll start with packages. So as you can see here, there's three main package tables to talk about here. We have WSPKG, that's gonna be our header. That's just basic package information at a high level. Then WSPKG line, that's our package line. So that's gonna be items and quantities, um, you know, uh, item codes, item descriptions, item specific information. And then WSPKG SL is gonna be serial and lot information for those items in that package. So WSPKG SL relates to that package line table and gives serial and lot info based on those line items. So I'm gonna jump over to SQL Management Studio here. So for anybody who's running HANA, of course you would use HANA Studio to query this stuff and look into this. Um, and in some cases, your queries have to be a little bit different in HANA. What we're doing today is pretty basic though. So it shouldn't have any issues. You should be able to do um, a straight copy of what I'm putting in here. You could put that into HANA. Um, so first I'm gonna go ahead and query that WSPKG. We're just gonna look at the whole table. And we'll talk a little bit more about this too, but you see here on the side, there's all kinds of views. So if I scroll up in my demo database views, ton of different views with WS as the precursor, that's all your WISIS stuff, of course. So everything that's you know starting with WS, you're talking about a WISIS view there. Um, and today, you know, we're only going through a handful in detail. We'll reference a couple of other ones, but of course, as you can see, as I scroll through here, there is a ton out there. So I encourage you to familiarize yourself with things that we don't even talk about today um, in the views now that you have an understanding of what's out there. All right, so WSPKG. Again, this is package header. So this is at a high level um, information pertaining to the package as a whole. So we have shipment number. Right. If we're uh, looking at a package that's on a shipment in WISIS, shipment number will be there in the table. Your package ID is your is your unique identifier 
uh, for the package. So for example, most of what we look at when we're uh, joining a table or when we're performing transactions and querying data, right? We're usually looking at the package ID rather than the package number uh, because that's your, uni your unique identifier. So if for whatever reason you decide to reset your package numbering later, let's say you wanted to go to 10,000, you hit 10,000 and you wanna start back over at one. Um, at that point, once you have two package number ones, we're still able to, of course, um, differentiate them in the system because we have this unique identifier of a package ID. So that's an alphanumeric ID. You're probably never gonna wanna display that specifically in a grid or anywhere where anybody's gonna see it because it doesn't make sense because they know it by the package number. But that's how we're able to, you know, make these unique in the system if you reset your packaging or anything like that. And then again, you know, there's package types, just a lot of really high level information, what bin, what warehouse. We have some shipping information for EANs, dimensions, things like that, right? So your package table, just high level information about the packages. Now we can take a look at the line and I'm just gonna go ahead and join here so you get a, a feel for what that looks like. So we're gonna join WSPKG line. And here, WSPKG line, it does have its own package line ID. So it has a unique identifier for the specific line, but it also in that table has that package ID unique identifier so that we can join back to this original package record. And, you know, of course, uh, pull all the details for that package so we can get deeper with the original package record by bringing in the line. So I'm gonna look at WSPKG line dot package ID equals WSPKG dot package ID. And now if I scroll all the way over here, now we see our line information. So this is where your line table starts or your line view. Um, sometimes I call these tables, excuse me if I mistakenly say that, like I mentioned before, um, we use views in, in place of the tables there to standardize that language. So here's your package line unique identifier. This package ID is here to tie this back to the original package record, of course, and allow us to do our join and put the information together. The package line is going to be the unique identifier for this specific item in the package, right? Or the specific line of the package. So here it's mostly just item information, right? We have a line number, what's the item number, description, some details from OITM, if you're familiar with your SAP tables, um, the order that's related to, if this is on a package that's on a shipment. Um, so you pick this item, right? This item is associated with a sales order. We tie that order number in here, so on and so forth. Um, quantity information, of course, you always have date and time stamps for when it's created information like that. And we, we do always provide you with a lot of UDFs in these views as well. So um, for those of you that are gonna get into the tailoring, um, especially my partners out there, you know, there's a ton of UDFs available. If you need to write something unique to your our packaging tables, whether it's WSPKG, WSPKG line, there's UDFs out there available in these voices views, um, you know, to add additional information to these packages. All right, so now let's go ahead and add WSPKG SL. So I'm sure a lot of you guys can probably guess how we're going to do that here is, since it applies to the line of the package, WSPKG SL has that package line ID, um, unique identifier in its table so we can tie it back to the line. So All right, so we're gonna join on those package line IDs. Let's scroll all the way to the end here. You'll see a much smaller table this time. So this uh, package serial and lot table, again, it's just for serial and lot information, right? So we tie it to the specific line. If that line had an item that was serial or batch tracked, then you know a record gets created in this table that has that serial or lot number. 
If they have a manufacturer serial or lot, we would have that as well. Effective date, expiration date, and the quantity falling in that serial or lot number. So at a high level here, of course, there's a lot in these tables. Um, this is where the package information lies. This is generally what information we have available for you to play with, with the packages. Um, but again, it's important to note WSPKG, that's your header information, has a unique ID. That unique ID ties to all of the lines that go in that package. Um, and then you have that PKG line table that holds all the line information for the items in the package. And lastly, a package line ID ties the line table to a serial and lot table that then puts all of that serial and lot information um, into our system as well and allows it to tie back to the specific line it relates to. So now if I jump back to my PowerPoint here, next up on the list is WSPKG shipment. Now, this is where all of our shipping information is housed. If you're familiar with Agility Shipping or the Weiss's Fulfillment Manager, um, you know, our product ships packages, right? So you use those packaging tables in the shipping product every time and you ship a series of packages from Agility Shipping or Fulfillment Manager. So shipping does relate to packages like we talked about before. If I jump back over to SQL Management Studio, we have a shipment number tied to the packages. So if I wanted to join the shipment here, I'm not gonna do that because I don't want too much information um, on the screen. If I wanted to join the shipment to a package, I just do it through shipment number, right? So we could query shipment and our packages all together very easily. Um, shipment ties the package number through, or ties the package through shipment number, package ties the line through package ID, line ties the SL through line ID. But here, I'm just gonna go ahead and query um, WSPKG shipment. So you can get a feel for what that is. Again, this is high level, all the information pertaining to the shipment, not the specific packages, just to the shipment. So here we have our shipment number, things used in shipping like trailer, truck company, uh, BOL number, pro number, seal. Uh, we have our timestamps for when it was created. Chase, are you talking? Can't hear you. You can't hear me? Now we can. Okay. Did I cut out for a while or just yeah. for a second there? Yeah, for, for a few seconds. Um, okay. So just running back through this then, this is just high level information related to the shipment, right? Um, everything in here is details that are used in agility shipping or fulfillment manager when you ship. That's what's stored in the shipping table, nothing related to the specific packages. And again, I, I wanted to highlight here, we have UDFs available to you too. So if you need um, a specific piece of information for a customer that does something unique, if that needs tracked in our shipping tables, UDFs are available for you to do so. So just to reiterate on this, the four tables that, um, or views that almost function like SAP tables in a way that house information that's specific to WISIS are gonna be your WSPKG and PKG line, PKG SL, that's all your package stuff. So we are package header, package line, package serial and lot. Then WSPKG shipment, which holds all of our shipment information. Now, when you're creating a WISIS label or a tailored application, you know, you're often going to be querying those tables. A lot of the time when you're doing a shipping label or a BOL or a packing slip, you know, you're going to want to look at our um, shipment table at the very least, probably our package tables as well, unless you're not using agility shipping. If you're just doing sales order delivery, then you want to use those tables. But if you're using agility shipping or fulfillment manager, you're going to need to query these. So we made a nice, easy, um, label view called WSPKG label that pulls all the information necessary for shipping labels and shipping documents. So I wanted to touch on that a little bit here too, because for those of you that do tailoring or create documents, a lot of people don't know that this is available for you. So if I go ahead and look into WSPKG 
label here, we have a view that is not a one-to-one. -one. This isn't a one-to-one -one of a table. This is a view that pulls a lot of information to um, one centralized point so you can easily create a label, right? So if you queried, you know, select all from WSPKG label um, in Crystal or in Weiss's label designer, um, whenever you're going to create a shipping document, this is going to pull in everything that you typically would need. Yeah, it's going to be different depending on the case. You might have to pull in some SAP tables or something to get something else, but typically this pulls in everything you need. Everything is precursed with the table it comes from. So here you see your BOL comes from WSPKG shipment. We do that WSPKG. We do that for troubleshooting purposes. So if you know a piece of data doesn't look like what you expect, you know where it's coming from. You can go back and dig it up. Um, but basically, it's just a ton of information in here all the way through, right? A ton of different shipping pieces uh, that can help you develop a label or any shipping documents. There's also a, another view, too, for BOL specific information and things like that. But WSPKG label, that can be your best friend in here um, when it comes down to creating labels and voices if you're doing it on the outbound end. I would use WSPKG label every time. It should have everything you need. So I wanted to touch on that too while we were talking about packaging and shipping. Now let's get into transactions and audits. This is the key piece when it comes to that troubleshooting that we talked about earlier. Um, anytime you're having an issue with data or um, if you're talking to support and they're troubleshooting your system and they're you know maybe asking you some questions about where things are, um, whatever. These are the tables that you're gonna most commonly use when it comes to troubleshooting because, well, you can look in, so if we talk about like these package ones first, we have a package transaction table, a package audit table. If you look in WSPKG, you get information on the packages right now. This is what the package looks like, right? That's the data that's in there. WSPKG TRX is your package transactions. So that has logged away every transaction that happens with each package. So you can go to you know, package 55, and you can query our um, WSPKG TRX to have a list of all the transactions that happen with that specific package. And then you can figure out the exact point where something went wrong. WSPKG odd, which is our package audits table, that gives you a glimpse into what a package looks like when transactions are performed, right? So when something happens in WSPKG TRX, you can look at package audit and see what the package looked like at the time of that transaction being performed. So let's take a look at those, but it's important to remember when it comes to transactions and audits, a transaction table walks you through all the transactions that happen for an item or um, in general, like this table is gonna be every voice's transaction. An audit table gives you a glimpse into something that happened at a specific point in time and what um, the item looked like, right? So with packages, it shows you what the package looked like when the transaction took place. Package transaction shows you what the transaction was. So let's take a look at WSPKG TRX here. So with WSPKG TRX, our package transaction table, First, you see every transaction that happens, once again, gets a unique identifier so we can easily find it and track it in the system. Now we can see what package number this happened for, and we can see the exact transaction. So you have your A's, which are creating a package or adding a package. B is changing a bin. Um, L is adding a line, right? Every time you um, add a line, it's, it's also doing a bin change because it's adding items from a bin to the package, right? Um, if I scroll down here, we have our T's for moving a package from one bin to the next or one warehouse to the next. And we have our D's for destroying or letting down a package. Lots of different types of transactions in here. Every transaction that takes place um, is logged away for that package. So if we look at package number one, here's all the transactions for package number one right there. You can see I created it added an item, added an item, added an item, you know, so on and so forth. It also tells you what bin this is all taking place in, where is this package when these transactions are taking place, um, what warehouse, if it's something like a move, um, let me go down to my T here, 
it shows you your new bin and your new warehouse. In this case, it didn't change, but if it did change, it would show you your new bin abs and your new warehouse location, tracks all that information away. But then the key part of this is it gives you a transaction date, time, and user stamp. So you know who did it, when they did it, um, which helps you get to the why did it happen, uh, if it was wrong, if it's something we don't want to happen, how can we prevent it, right? This gives you the ability to track what's happening with your packages and easily, you know, find out where data went wrong or, um, you know, try and get in there and fix things by retracing your steps. So that's what we have there with WSPKG TRX. Now, if we look at our package audit, So package audit is very different. Here we have a lot of package information where before it's really just focused on the transaction in your package transaction table. This is giving you a glimpse into the package at the time of transaction. So we see here, you know, we have our shipment number, the package ID, so you can look at a specific package, package number, right? Some specific package details in here. Now, if we scroll all the way over, we have our actions once again, so we can see, you know, okay, we have, you know, we added the package and we had a bin change and so on and so forth. We can see that an action took place and this is all the details for what the package looks like at that point in time. So um, I would never really argue to the merit of one versus the other. I think package transactions and package audits are both very valuable in troubleshooting something that went wrong with a package. I think they both give you you know, some layers of situation and can be um, really good tools. So I would definitely file both of these away in your toolbox and utilize both views when it comes to troubleshooting, selling data related with a package. Now, um, I wanna show you another example of both another audit table and another transaction table. So we're gonna take a look at our WTR, WSTRX log. That's our, just our transaction log for every transaction in WISIS. Um, so you're gonna see any time basically that WISIS errors out here. So that's our WS TRX log. And I wanted to mention too, if you look over here with all my WISIS views, if I scroll down um, at a point here, you start to see lots of TRXs, right? Lots of TRX views, lots of audit views. You know, there's TRX logs for the serial and lot, there's TRX logs for the line, there's audits for the line. Um, basically what I'm trying to get at here is anything that's happening in WISIS, we're, we have somewhere where we have transactions or audits so that you can track things that went wrong. So um, I'm only touching on four total views of the transaction and audit category today, but there's a lot more out there. So when it comes to troubleshooting, just you know, go ahead, poke around, be diligent, there's a lot of different tables out there where you can find information um, and find audits and, and transaction logs. Typically, a transaction log ends with TRX and typically an audit log ends with AUD. Um, I had an audit up here, AUD. Now, funny enough, uh, the next two examples are both not gonna follow that rule of thumb, but I promise typically it's gonna be TRX at the end for a transaction log, AUD at the end for an audit log. So now it's WSTRX here again, you get, you get a timestamp for the date and time that this transaction took place. Is there an error? Yes, there was. Um, you can see the specific user who performed the transaction, what WISIS application they were using. So you can see here, label designer, Agility 360, label designer again. Then you have the process that was taking place, the object name, and the class name all in here so you can you know track what was actually happening and again if you're not super technical this is something you'll work with our support team on when you're troubleshooting issues but just good to know where this information is so like here for example you can see with agility 360 um i'm setting up a connection then i'm actually which is a connection to the api then i'm actually in the agility 360 product doing things um processing actions and that's where it's coming into play. But at first, we're setting up a connection there. If we scroll over, we can see the message, so the error code, um, which again, 
bunch of error codes about failed logins um, in that situation, or up here we have failed to convert a parameter value, so on and so forth. But we're tracking transactions that are happening in Oasis in general, storing those error message. Um, you know, so if we have to troubleshoot if something really is wrong and it's not just a mistake um, that was made using the application or something like that, we have this this log filed away here so we can track those things. And lastly, in this section, I want to talk about WS scan audit. Um, now, our WS scan audit audits all the scans set up for a certain role. So I want to talk about this a little bit because if I go ahead and query this, mine's going to actually be blank uh, because I don't have it turned on. But this is something that a lot of you may want to use. Oops, did not mean to do that. So yeah, you see mine's blank here. What our scan audits do is they track the transaction that took place, the process that took place, kind of like what I just showed you in that Weiss's transaction log. They track the user who did it, the date that they did the scan, um, the actual field, uh, what they're scanning into the field, right? So if they're scanning um, an item code, what item code was passed in that field, what type of error they got, um, the device that they're using, right? This is an actual audit of this exact scan that took place. So this is a snapshot into, okay, a scan happened. Here's what it looked like. This is the actual scan that happened. This is very valuable for you know, a lot of real world scenarios and real case scenarios. So I wanted to touch on this a little bit. In Agility Explorer here, if you go to File, Options, and WMS, you have the ability to turn these on. We don't by default just have these on for everything because of course that's a ton of data um, going into your system. But if you wanna use these, if you have valid, um, if you have value in using these scan audits, you can turn them on by user or by form. So, you know, if you have a user that, um, you know, is making a lot of mistakes, you could turn on scan audits so you can catch those mistakes. If you have new users and you wanna um, have those scan audits on for the first month or two that they're there to make sure um, that if they accidentally do something because they're not as familiar with WISIS yet, you can have those audits on to track that. Um, you can also turn on scan audits for a specific form. So in a lot of cases, um, something like, let's say, goods issue, where you're actually removing items from inventory, you might want to turn scan audits on for that because that's somewhere where a mistake could be made and your inventory could be off because of it, right? So you could turn on scan audit for that. Then you have the ability to track in there, find the scan where things went wrong um, and try and correct the problem. So these are just worth noting not a lot of you probably have these on right now or have seen these on in someone's environment because it's always off uh, from the get-go. Um, but a lot of cases, it is worth turning these on and it might be you know, a tool that's very useful to you. So that is where you turn these on in the system. And again, in this uh, view for our scan audits, it's just a glimpse into what the actual scan was. So what type of transaction they're doing, who did it, the date, um, what they actually scanned, right? That's what a scan audit does for you. All right. Now let's get into our preload and setup views and we'll wrap this thing up shortly after that. Um, so with preload and setup, I'm just gonna gloss over the setup and background stuff, but I wanted to make it clear that that's there and um, you know, so, so that everybody knows uh, kind of what's there that you don't wanna touch. But with preload stuff, Let's talk about that. So if you're familiar with our system, if you've used GRPO or sales order delivery, um, you would be familiar with our preload ability. So let's talk about GRPO. Um, when we use the GRPO application, we go through a purchase order and we receive in an item and we save and we just keep going line by line and saving. And that all saves to a preload table, which is what we're about to talk about or a preload view. And then we post on the application one bulk goods receipt PO um, into SAP with all those lines that we did. So we utilize these preload tables to temporarily store data so we can post a bulk transaction like that. If uh, you have single transaction turned on or if we didn't give that preload ability, what would happen is every time you hit save, it would create a new GRPO and SAP for that individual line. So that's how we're using these preload tables. Um, and then real quick on setup, 
in essentials settings here. So again, agility explorer options, WMS essentials options, single transaction forms. If these boxes are unchecked, these forms are utilizing a preload. So sales return, delivery note, goods received, PO and production issue. Those are the forms that can use a preload table. If I check one of these boxes, it turns that preload table off for that form. So you wanna leave them unchecked if you wanna utilize the preload. Now, when it comes to preload, we have WSSAP document. That's just what's the document information, right? So header information for the document. So if it's RGRPO example, um, you know, who was the business partner this purchase order is from, what's the original purchase order number, and then we store the object number in there too, so we actually know that it's a purchase order and not a sales order or goods issue, something else. WSSAP document line is again, item information. So what's the item, what's the quantity, um, you know, that type of detail about the specific lines of the purchase order. And then WS SAP document bin SNB, that's gonna be bin data for the lines and serial and batch. So similar to our package tables, you have a header, you have a line which is focused on the items, headers focused on the document as a whole. And then instead of just the SL, like we have with packages, we have the bin SNB, which stores bin information in addition to serial and batch information. So let's just take a look at that real quick. So also you can see there's transaction logs for this, just going off of what I said before, pretty much every um, view that you're looking at and using, there's probably a transaction or an audit log or both in there so you can track the information. So here, WSSAP document, again, header information. We store the base entry, the base type. So what type of document was it? What was the original base entry number and the, the business partner? And that's pretty much it. Most of these other things will be null in most cases, but could be set if needed. Then if we go to the line, again, this is gonna be just item information, no, um, you know, batch or serial numbers, no bin. It does have warehouse on the item line. So we have the item, the warehouse, uh, the quantity, and then again, to tie back to the uh, WSSAP document, we have the base entry, the base type, and then this line, of course, gets a baseline associated with it. And then lastly, we've got bin SNB, And again, bin SMB, you're gonna pull in the bin. So if we look at those lines, we can see, okay, well, what bins are those lines going to? Um, batch number, manufacturer serial, internal serial, any um, you know serial and batch information, expiration date, any of that gets stored here in this preload table. So to walk you back through how those work though, we utilize those three views. As you go through a form like the GRPO or the SO delivery, saves that information temporarily in that view table. And then we post it from the handheld. And you know, a lot of the time your, your uh, view here might be completely empty because when I actually post these, they'll be cleared out of here, right? Um, we don't wanna leave these temporary records in there forever um, and potentially post them a second time. So once they're posted to SAP and the, the real document is created, we wipe out the temporary records in these um, preload tables because now they're loaded to SAP. So of course you no longer need the preload. It's important to keep in mind, um, you know, that so there's a potential data issue there, right? If there's a bunch hanging around in those tables, you might wanna go in there and understand, okay, why is it still in there? Um, things of that nature. And those are good tables to know how they work, especially if you plan on tailoring applications and utilizing the preload table for a tailored application. And lastly, I wanted to talk about these views of store info. We're not gonna take a look at them, but I just wanted to mention, there is a lot of views in there that store information that's key to how Oasis works. It's background stuff that you don't want to touch. You don't wanna ever go in there and change these views. Uh, the data in these views, um, you really don't need to query them for any information. But for example, um, WS process is a view that stores all those processes that we talked about from our transaction logs and stuff. 
it just has all the processes that happen in WISIS. WS Projects stores all of your projects. So, um, you know, if, if you're a WISIS customer, you would have Agility Essentials in there. If you use Palettes, you'd have Agility Palettes. If you use um, Fulfillment, you would have our Fulfillment project. Or if you have tailorings, you would likely have one or two tailoring projects, right? So it might be so-and-so WISIS tailored apps, right? WS project is just in the background where we store all your projects for Design Studio or Form Studio. They, you know, actually hold the applications, um, grids, forms, whatever you're using in WISIS. That's, you know, all in a project and those projects are stored in the project table. So of course you don't wanna go in there and delete a project because then you'll lose everything in that project. Um, similar for roles, if you create roles for your users, if I go in there right now and create a delivery role for somebody in WISIS, um, that's saved to my WS role table. So again, it's just important to understand that that stuff is all saved in a table somewhere in here. Um, for troubleshooting, that could come up down the line at some point, um, but these tables, you typically don't want to be touching them uh, and you, you probably don't really need to uh, query them for information. So when you go and play around in the tables, just be weary of tables like these that store sensitive information for how OASIS works, um, you know, records that you don't want to delete and don't want to play around with. Uh, just make sure you're aware that there's a lot of views like that in the system as well that you don't want to touch. So going back through what we covered today, why do we use views? Um, basically, most of our views are used because they're a one-of-one -one copy of the tables that allow us to standardize the language for our different ERPs we work with, right? So from working with Macola and SAP, um, you basically, we utilize these views to standardize the language across the prod products, um, despite table names being different, right? SAP has different table naming conventions than Macola. So we use the view, makes all the table names uh, standardized for us. How can knowing these views help you guys? Again, there's kind of two main categories to that. There's data, which can be, you know, troubleshooting, troubleshooting data, data's messed up. I need to go in there and look at a transaction log or a package doesn't seem right. I want to query the table and look at all the details of that package, something like that. Or data reporting, if you want to, you know, create a grid that shows data on a uh, package or you want to create a dashboard that shows information about shipments so on and so forth. Uh, if you want to report data, it's good to understand these views because that's where a lot of WISIS data comes from. Um, but then also there's the tailoring side of things. So if you're creating documents or tailoring applications, it's good to understand these views so you can easily navigate the information within WISIS and use it to your advantage when it comes to tailoring or creating a document. And lastly, we talked about those key categories of views. So Packing and shipping are, you know, similar to SAP tables where, you know, those are pieces of information that are going to tie to actual records you're creating in the system and uh, something you're going to want to query all the time and use in processes. So those are going to be your most frequently used tables. We have some views for labeling or documents that just allow you to get a lot of information you might need for a specific type of document uh, right there at your fingertips, easy to query, easy to use. Transaction tracking allows you to see all the transactions happening either in the system or for a package, something like that. While audit logs gives you a glimpse into how something looks at a certain point of time when a transaction takes place. Preload tables allows us to temporarily store information that we're going to bulk post in the SAP. Um, you know, so again, those records are typically temporary. If you have a lot hanging out in there, you know, that that could be something to note. Um, but basically, we store the information, then when you post it from the handheld application, it's just going to put all that information right into SAP in one document instead of multiple. And then set up information views. Um, those are the ones you don't want to touch, just some views that hang around in the background that hold necessary information for how OASIS works that you typically want to want to try and stay away from there. So again, I know today was technical. It's less fun. I'm not in there showing you how forms work or showing you a grid and uh, the tangible stuff. It's fun to see, but this is very valuable information. I mean, for every WISIS user, at least being familiar, at the very least, with the packing and shipping views 
um, I think is extremely important, but um, being familiar with everything that's out there, uh, even if you never touch it, knowing it's there, that can help a lot whenever it comes to things like troubleshooting or tailoring, you know, knowing what's available at your fingertips helps you make decisions about what you're actually going to use. So I hope that you guys got a lot out of this. I think it's a lot of valuable information. Um, and next time we'll be less technical. I'm planning next session to be a little bit more fun, showing you more things that are going on in the product. But, you know, this is one of those um, deep dives that is necessary to have so you can learn more about the Oasis system. So thank you guys for attending. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up for questions. Aaron, do we have any questions in the chat? I think you kind of <clears throat> answered that question at the end, but the, somebody asked if you could realize the data in a grid, right? So using our Agility desktop product. Yeah. Um, would that yeah. be something you could create queries for to have this data in a grid? Yeah, definitely. And so that's going back to that data reporting aspect. Again, you know, so Weiss is real time and integrated with SAP. So a lot of the time when you look at our grids or when you tailor an application, it may just be using SAP tables, but you can easily use just Weiss's stuff or a mixture of Weiss's views and SAP tables. So you could create a grid that looks at, you know, so in our package line table, for example, we have a lot of item information. We could take that, we could join that to OITM and get a deeper dive on the actual item details. So there's things that we leave out of our tables because they're not really necessary to have in a package line table, but you could join OITM, an actual SAP table to that in a grid and you know get deeper information on the items that are in those package lines. Something like that, all kinds of different yeah. ways to utilize it, but you can always query these Weiss's views. Yeah. And, and you did describe that this is a more technical session, which uh, I know some of our partners appreciate that. And, and if any of the um, end users here want to have a deeper dive into uh, some of these views and questions, please feel free to reach out to Chase here. I know um, uh, he's willing to help on all of this aspect. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And thank you guys all in attendance for sticking with me through this one again. I mean, it's, it's uh, a lot of information that's the thing with the views. There's no um, easy way to show it. There's no visual cues I can really give you that make it clear. That's why I try to show some things in um, SQL Management Studio. But um, while I'm throwing a lot of information at you today, take the time to digest it and understand it. And it will be really valuable for helping you understand how the system works. So thanks for taking the time. And yeah, Chase, to add, this will be added to our YouTube repository too, so you can refer back to it as necessary when you're when you need some more information and want to revisit. Of course, yeah, thanks, Chase. yeah. Thank you, Aaron. Thanks for being here. Thanks everybody in attendance. Um, like Aaron said, reach out to me if you have any questions. Have a good one, everyone.